So to get, set the context, I'm in Iran. At this point, I'm on my own. Uh, and I'm out in the wilds of Iran, very few houses, very few people, uh, sleeping basically wild. My tent was stolen in Athens, so uh, I basically got very clever at finding places to sleep outside. So I'm in that, that's the sort of the setting. It's very dry, semi-desert. Being alone on the road provides time for introspection. I think about the future. What will I do? Where will I live? And what kind of life do I want? On this empty plane, an intuition arises and grows stronger with time. My future wife awaits me in India. The idea arrives as a simple certainty. I don't doubt that it's true. She's in India and I shall marry her. An exotic Indian spouse, how delightful is that? As I cycle through the barren landscape, I picture us together. We recline on silk cushions, drinking chai. Parrots screech in a mango tree outside. Café au lait colored children play in the garden. It's a good life. It'll be another 14 years before I marry an American girl from Manhattan. But she is indeed in India at this time, and that's where we'll meet. The road crosses a low pass and then slopes steadily down. The wind whips tears from my eyes and I feel them pass along my temples into my hair. I relish speeding downhill on a silent piece of machinery that I can trust to carry me safely. The terrain settles into hills with moderate climbs and satisfying descents. I approach the top of a long ascent and become aware of something out of the corner of my eye. To my left, a little behind and above me, a patch of grey bushes is outlined against the sky. Odd, since scrub here grows no more than a few inches high. The bushes move, and for a moment I'm confused. Then I see it's a large pack of wild dogs. They're huge, with broad heads and shaggy matted coats. There are 15 or more, but I don't stop to count. I'm almost at the crest of the rise, and they're some 30 yards away. There's no time for deliberation. I must try to outrun them. They make a rush at me, yowling wildly. Given their size, it's more galloping than running. My fear it fuels extraordinary acceleration and speed. I race to the top and glance over my shoulder. They're in pursuit with the leaders just a few yards behind. The giant in front has bloodshot eyes and huge yellow teeth. He's no more than 15 feet from me. I pedal like a man possessed, downshifting quickly from one gear to the next. A mile passes before I dare to stop my frenzied pedaling. The adrenaline and my pumping heart roar in my ears. The dogs are now nowhere to be seen. Another wave of shock passes through me. When I first saw them, I thought to face them. It would not have gone in my favor. Dogs, get, dogs gather in threes or fours. A pack this large is rare. I later learned that these are Caucasian mountain dogs. These wild dogs, descendants of escapees from camel trains of the Silk Road, are legendary. The locals describe them as tall as an ass or the bear who crushes wolves because the size and strength of their paws. This dog's massive face can appear like a bear's. Breeders caution against direct, uh, direct eye contact with an adult male, even if he's domesticated. <laughs> 